Okay, so I know uh, Victoria is going to be uh, joining us a little bit late. She's on another meeting right now. Yes. Um, yes, and other than that, we are ready to go whenever you are. Very well, then we'll go ahead and call this meeting to order. And again, just as in the past meetings, this uh, will be a virtual meeting based on uh, the COVID-19 pandemic that we've got going on. Uh, so um, we're all doing this remotely. And again, uh, members of the public wishing to speak uh, during public comment or during any of our items, uh, you're encouraged to use the raised hand feature um, on your Zoom. Or if you're calling in by phone, uh, by pressing star nine and, and you will be allowed to make comments then. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, begin with our roll call again. Uh, I'm here as well as Council Member Sawyer. Uh, Vice Mayor Fleming will be joining us shortly as soon as she's off another meeting as well. Uh, so do we have any other announcements for this morning? Uh, no, we don't. Uh, unless Raphael. Uh, Raphael, are you, you should be able to speak. Okay. Uh, hi. Hey, I was just making sure we don't, making sure we don't have any other announcements before we get on with our uh, regular agenda. Good morning. Good morning, Raphael. Okay, let's go ahead and begin with uh, public comment on items not on the agenda. Again, if you wish to make a comment, please uh, use the raise hand feature on your Zoom, or if you're calling in by phone, use a star, a press star nine to raise your hand and we'll have you make a comment. So it looks like we have none, Eileen. Yes, we, we are ready to go. Okay. We have no, we have no raised hands. I'm, I apologize. No, no, there's no problem. It's okay. We've got to manage this thing virtually here. We'll get, we'll get through it. So let's go ahead and move on to our new business. Our first item for today is Tara Thompson uh, with permitted events and public arts update. And Tara, you should be able to speak now. Thank you, Eileen. Good morning, um, Chair Oliveras and Council Member Sawyer and everyone. Um, I have a brief update today on events as well as public art. I'll start with events. Um, we don't have too much to update since our meeting last month. Special event permits continue to be suspended through the end of the year at the least, except for certain activities such as open and out and other economic drivers or service providing types of events that follow current health orders, um, such as a farmer's market, for instance. Um, we did have some news from Iron Man. Um, I think I mentioned last time that Iron Man, or maybe two times ago, that Iron Man will not be holding any events here in San Rosa this year. Um, but they also announced recently that they are not going to hold um, an Iron Man event in 2021 either, um, and that they will come back to San Rosa for one event in 2022, which would be the last event under their current contract with the city. Um, that's really all I have for events, and I'm happy to answer any questions, but I'll move directly on to the art update. Um, so Imagine Art in Courthouse Square is the new public art project planned for the north end of the square. We are very excited that we have five finalist designs that are now on view to the public on our website. The website to take a look at is srcity.org slash imagineart. Um, all five finalist images and descriptions are on the site as well as a survey. And we really encourage everyone to take a brief survey on the site, uh, which asks, what, what's your favorite? Um, how do you respond to the five finalist designs? Uh, the survey results will be used in the final considerations of the selection panel when they make their final decision. Um, for other artwork um, news, um, the ZAG artwork by Michael Hayden, which you may recall was on the pedestrian bridge behind the Vineyard Creek Hyatt Hotel um, for many years and was not maintained <clears throat> in a proper way, fell apart. Um, recently, the Art and Public Places Committee adopted the piece and commissioned the artist to recreate it on the pedestrian bridge closer to Prince Gateway Park over the, uh, uh, the creek, the Santa Rosa Creek. And uh, Michael just completed that work 
and we have our city electricians finalizing the final connections to our um, photo cell kind of timer system. So it'll come on um, in the evenings and go off early morning. And if you recall, this is a, um, a fiber optic now converted to LED light sculpture, uh, which is on the bridge itself and should be very colorful and interesting to look at once it's up and running, should be by this weekend. We will not be able to hold a traditional dedication ceremony or unveiling due to COVID, but we will be announcing the news online and through our social media channels um, and potentially holding an event when we can, when health orders allow that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, the other artwork news we have open and out, Cadence will probably share more under the DAO update today, um, but we have had a just a wonderful, um, a wonderful outpouring of support for all of the art that we have been able to install as temporary art as part of the open and out program along 4th Street and in Courthouse Square. Um, I think we have seven or eight completed installations with about 15 or so yet to come. So it's been a really uh, wonderful way to support artists and enliven the space downtown. Um, in other um, just kind of maintenance news, we are planning to work on the women, woman with a water jug sculpture on uh, 4th Street at Jeju Way. Uh, but there are some issues with the fountain itself we're trying to work through with our public works team. Uh, as well as um, we have on our schedule to repaint Tuberosity, which is that yellow sculpture in Olive Park. So that is a public art and events update, and I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Tara. Uh, Vice Mayor Fleming, uh, uh, Councilmember Sawyer, any questions? Just, just a, a, a quick um, uh, request. Tara, could you repeat the, the um, survey website again for us? Yes, of course. Um, yeah, it's srcity.org slash imagine art. Thank you. Uh, Tara, I just wanted to let you know that I had an opportunity to look at um, some of the art um, installations on 4th Street on Monday night and was impressed by how vibrant and, um, you know, just um, was it was just such a wonderful feeling to be down there. And, um, you know, it, with fall coming in and so forth, it was, a, it was a relief from all of the stress and all the smoke and all of the, the difficulties that we've been going through. So thank you so much to you and your team and all the artists for making this possible. Thank you so much. It's my pleasure. Do we have any questions from members of the public? I don't see any hands at this time. Okay, so Hi. we'll. No, there are no, no comments from the public at this time. Okay, very well, thank you. And let's move on to item uh, two, the downtown station area specific plan update by uh, Amy Lyle, our supervising planner. Good morning, committee members. This is Amy Lyle. And I just have a very brief update for you today. Uh, the downtown area specific plan has been out for public comment. So the plan and the environmental impact report uh, were out for 45 days and that period closed on August 31st on Monday. So we did get a good amount of comments. Uh, we did a lot of outreach uh, virtually. So we had about 10 different outreach meetings and then probably a dozen or so other focused meetings with individual stakeholders and are continuing to meet with the development community about um, specific components of the plan. I will say the last few weeks have been challenging. As we know, most residents are just triggered in general. So we were very sensitive about um, what, how we did our outreach in the last few weeks. And um, we have um, allowed some organizations to just provide comments a little bit later, or you know, we wanted to provide some flexibility um, based on what has been going on in our community. So for the schedule going forward, um, we have a tight turnaround with our environmental impact report. So our consultant team is really focused on responding to the comments on that. And meanwhile, our team at the city um, are focused on our zoning code amendments that are necessary to implement the plan and the design guideline amendments. So those will be moving forward um, tracking about a month after adoption of the specific plan itself. But the specific plan and the environmental impact report 
will be going to the Planning Commission on September 24th and then targeting the City Council for um, October 13th. So those are the only updates I have at this time, but I'm happy to answer questions. Excuse me. Thank you, Amy. Uh, Vice Mayor Fleming, Council Member Sawyer, questions? Any members of the public wishing to uh, make comments on this item? No, there are no members of the public requesting uh, comment at this time. Okay. Let's go ahead and move on to item uh, 4.3, Resilient City Initiatives, Zoning Code Amendments, uh, Resilient City. Uh, uh, Sherry Meads will be making this presentation. Terrific. And Sherry, you should be unmuted at this point, and we're just working on getting your presentation up. It will just take one moment. Wonderful, Eileen. Thank you so much. And there it is. Good morning, committee members. I'm here with you to discuss the Resilient City Initiative Zoning Code Amendments. Next slide, please. As most of you know, the city adopted a suite of initiatives in response to the, <clears throat> excuse me, 2017 wildfires to promote housing and economic development. We refer, refer to this set of ordinances as the Resilient City Initiatives. And this project is a three-year temporary zoning code that will extend many of the original measures, but it will also take a broader look at ways the city can promote business flexibility in support of both fire and COVID recovery. Things like, are there regulatory, regulatory restrictions we can relax in order to alleviate burdens on businesses? Are there new emerging industries that we should be nurturing? We're, we're all in. Um, we'll eventually have to consider health and safety regulate that sometimes answer the question of can we do it? But at this point, we're trying to hear what regulatory tools the community wants. And note, if ideas are not right for this temporary code change, we can still explore them for later work. Next slide, please. One of the steps of this process includes taking a look at the rebuild area ordinance and evaluating whether current conditions allow us to pull back on some of the relaxed regulations and if other changes should be made based on nearly three years of recovery experience. Next slide, please. The resilient city development measures are citywide initiatives, so changes to this ordinance are likely to have the greatest impact. And these are some of the things we have been exploring at a staff level. Consider them like a menu of options, one could say. And what we're asking is, have we captured things that the business and community members need? Next slide, please. Here's the project timeline. We will be holding a virtual community meeting discussion on the evening of Monday, September 14th to introduce this project. And we're hoping to hear some great ideas from folks. Sometimes a community member can come up with something way outside the box that we haven't thought of. So we're really looking forward to getting that input. We'll be reaching out to the chamber group soon as well. Uh, we plan on taking this to the Planning Commission in early October and introduction by the City Council is expected during November. Next slide, please. And here's my contact information. I really hope that everyone will reach out if they have ideas, suggestions, questions, comments, anything that can make this really powerful. That's what we're hoping to do here. And I'm also available now to answer any questions you may have. Thank you. Good. Thank, thank you, Sherry. Uh, Mayor Fleming, Councilor Sawyer, any questions? Mr. Sawyer? Thank you, uh, uh, Mr. Oliveras. So uh, just a comment. Thank you very much, Sherry, for your presentation and good luck with your, with your outreach. And then we all know how important it is, and you're right about uh, hearing things that, that staff and other um, uh, members of the project have not heard before. And it's these, these kinds of recommendations and suggestions can, be, can really make, um, make a project uh, fly. And uh, so I'm looking forward to the public input. It's going to be really important. Absolutely. Good luck with that. Thank you. Vice Mayor Fleming, questions? Thank you. Any members of the public wishing to comment on this item? No, there are no members of the public um, indicating they would like to comment. Thank you. 
Can I uh, go ahead and move on to 4.4, the Downtown Action Organization update. Uh, Cadence, uh, thank you for all the work you've been doing uh, the last uh, month or so in uh, making things happen downtown. So I'll turn it over to you for, for an update. Thank you and, and good morning committee members. Um, looking forward to giving you some updates today on what's happening downtown and what we're looking forward to. Um, first, a quick update on our street plus crew. Not surprisingly, the uh, number of quality of life responses nearly doubled in August from July. The team has been working a lot with um, the expanding homeless population downtown, which uh, has become more of an issue for them actually this week which I don't think would be a surprise to anybody. Uh, but we're working with Catholic Charities um, to try to address the issues because it's become, we've had a number of calls from business owners um, about those experiencing homelessness, interrupting the, the diners, uh, people eating outdoors and enjoying the open and out space. So that's been a bit of a challenge as they're you know, trying to keep their businesses going. And we've had, I know, um, quite a few calls to the police over the past few days. So trying to work with all of our city partners to um, kind of address this issue and make sure we're getting everyone uh, who is willing to take services and, and housing. So um, thank you to all of our partners on, on that initiative and on the open and out uh, program. It's been really great to work with city staff uh, who have been creative and supportive and dedicated to supporting um, small businesses in downtown. So um, moving on to open and out, a couple updates. As Tara mentioned, we, we do have seven pieces of artwork installed. Uh, one more is in process and we have 17 left. Um, so those are gonna be installed between now and the end of the year. And we actually have one that uh, was put on hold until April. Uh, so that'll be a fun way to kind of extend, um, extend the artwork through next year as we're looking to keep downtown uh, a little more vibrant, as Victoria said. Um, we have uh, two socially distanced performances that we're going to be having over the next couple of weeks. Ballet of Folklorico is going to come and perform um, kind of a roving performance, so not trying to gather a crowd, but um, trying to um, bring a little culture and entertainment to those who are downtown. And then um, the local Sonoma County Taiko group is going to come and do a couple drumming demonstrations as well. So we're excited to be partnering with those two groups. And um, as long as musicians are comfortable, we, we still have them outside performing Friday and Saturday evenings and Sunday afternoons. Um, we've got a few cancellations because of smoke, but it seems when I've been downtown and what I've heard from others, it, the smoke hasn't had that much of an impact on people being interested in being out. So when it's not too bad, it does it is still pretty lively. Um, so those are happening as um, as the musicians are able. Uh, I shared our most recent survey responses with you already, but responses continue to show that the majority of businesses are still supportive of the program. I think if anything, it shows that they're tired of answering surveys. Um, we definitely have some who are still opposed and feel that they have not seen a benefit from the increased foot traffic that Open and Out has brought, and we're still trying to engage with those businesses and figure out ways to help, um, help them get, get creative and uh, engage with the population who is who is coming downtown. Um, and we definitely have some retailers who are doing that. We've got some who are adjusting hours because they're seeing people come later in the day. Um, they're doing interesting and innovative things to bring people um, into their shop and make them familiar with their product. So um, we love seeing that and love hearing from them. There's a lot of really fun ideas that are um, out there from some of our retailers. And um, we continue to get really positive feedback from the community around open and out, especially around the artwork and the way it has enlivened the space. So I think Victoria spoke to that and, and uh, we have an, um, a lot of the upcoming pieces are going to be um, very exciting. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to those. I'll share that the, the one that has gotten the most attention um, is a piece called Foamy Delight. I don't know if anyone has seen that, but it's on the welcome pillars on the corner of um, E and 4th. And it's kind of a nod to Santa Rosa's beer culture. So it's it's kind of a sweet piece, um, a little beer mug and, and um, bottle pouring into it. So people love that and I think kind of makes them um, proud of their hometown. 
So uh, one thing that we I wanted to mention was that, you know, we've been doing our surveys for six weeks now, and we are seeing a clear majority who are continuing to support the program. Uh, we have two options for the end of Open It Up. We can keep surveying every two weeks, or at this point, we can decide that um, I think we've, we've seen enough positive feedback. We're halfway through. We're going to keep the program going uh, definitely through October 15th. So I would um, defer to you. I'm happy to keep surveying our businesses every two weeks, every two weeks um, or we can let them know um, that the program is going to run through October 15th. We have um, begun discussing what it will look like after October 15th. We, uh, the city staff are meeting this afternoon to talk about options. Uh, we've gotten a lot of questions from our restaurant owners. They want to know, can we keep our park lists? What's next? How do we keep our businesses going? Um, so we're going to work through with city staff what those options are. And then our goal is going to be to present those to our business owners, uh, share with them the different ways that open and out can continue or not continue and collect their feedback. We're also going to do a public facing survey, which we hope to get out to as many people as possible because we know it's very important to have community feedback on what the downtown looks like. It does belong to everybody. Um, so we'll be taking those two surveys and um, staff and, and the open and out group who've been working on the program will uh, ideally come up with a recommendation for you um, for our next meeting on October 1st, and then that will determine what happens after October 15th. So that's our goal to give you that um, recommendation at that point based on our survey responses from both of those groups. Any open and out questions? I have one more topic to cover, but I don't know if I want to stay here for a moment. I think that was no. Okay. But did you have a preference? Um, do you do you want surveys to keep going for every two weeks through October fifteenth? Okay. So so the questions to us now are: Do we want the surveys to continue uh, as we've been doing in, in the past? Um, Vice Mayor Fleming, uh, Councilmember Sawyer, uh, any questions on that or comments on that? I'll um, speak up. Uh, I think for predictability, I think it's a good idea to set to set that to set a time uh, so that the merchants have a um, something they can depend on, and the community needs to know as well, so that, so that they can plan their um, their trips downtown. So I would be in favor of, of moving forward with setting the date um, of October fifteenth and just let it and let it keep running until that time. Okay. Yes, and, and, and I think the other question too was related to uh, continuing on with the surveys during that time as well. You know, I, I'm kind of, um, I think the people that really are interested in uh, responding to the survey probably probably have. Uh, I'm not sure that, that, that there would be great value in continuing it, especially if, if, it's, if it is decided to, main, to keep that date um, positive um, the sending out a survey would suggest that a, that a change might happen. And I, I think just kind of biting the bullet, being bold about it and saying October 15th is the target date um, is probably, in my opinion, would be the best course of action. Thank you. Vice Mayor Fleming? I'm inclined to agree with Councilmember Sawyer. Thank you. And I, and I, I agree as well. I think uh, it's, it's time, and you mentioned that Cadence is looking at what's going to be the next steps. And I think we need to start focusing some of that energy to that is beyond October 15th, what things will look like and what adjustments we can make uh, for our businesses in the downtown. So I, I would be in agreement that we can go ahead and stop with the surveys. I think we have a lot of valuable information that was provided and I don't anticipate any major changes as we move forward with it. Uh, so with that, I'll, uh, and, and again, and I also wanted to, again to express my gratitude, uh, Cadence, to the work that you've done in making this happen. I know it's been a lot of work, but I see what's happening downtown really as, as a success. Uh, I know it has not been 100% uh, uh, satisfaction with what we've done, but I think overall, I think it's been a very positive thing. So uh, if there's no other questions from my colleagues, we'll go ahead and move on to- my, my 
uh, through the chair, might I make a comment? Um, yeah. Which is that, um, you know, a thank you to Cadence for all the work on that because they, they have been quite useful in um, reconciling some of the sentiments that we hear from people with the data that we get back and, and understanding you know, what is working and what hasn't been working, giving us some confidence um, in knowing that, you know, we are meeting the, the majority of the constituents. Um, and when I say constituents, I mean business owners, um, you know, needs in the area. So I wanted to thank you for all your work and um, the amount of liaising that you do with them. So that's all. Thank you. Any uh, comments uh, from uh, from the public? Uh, Chair Oliveris, there are no hands raised at this time. Well, I've never seen this group be no, so shy. Uh, one more item. What's that? Cadence, I think you had one more item on this? Yes. Okay, yeah. So okay. the last thing I want to mention is the Asala Fountain. Um, we are, hopefully you can hear me, my computer's gone a little fuzzy. Um, we are, so we're moving forward with rebuilding the Asala Fountain. And again, I uh, really appreciate the partnership with the city of Tara, um, and Grant and um, the public works team helping us move this along quickly. Uh, we sent a press release out yesterday with details and we've created a website um, connected with both the Asala Foundation and the Japanese American Citizens League in Sonoma County to let them know that we're in the process of moving forward. We've raised about 85% of the funds needed and are aiming to wrap up fundraising by the end of this month. Um, and I have to thank Caroline Spence for uh, joining us in that effort. She's been uh, instrumental in getting that going. And um, we're going to be working closely with Tara and Public Works moving forward, um, but the goal is to break ground in the next few months. Uh, so we're really excited about this project and are looking forward to um, bringing those panels uh, back to downtown and uh, adding a new piece of, or a new old piece of artwork to Courthouse Square. So that's a, an exciting update and I'll, I'll continue to let you know that progress as we move along. Vice Mayor John, any questions? Okay, any members of the public wishing to comment? There are no raised hands at this time. Thank you. Let's go ahead and move on to the other side of the freeway. Rafael. Sí, buenos días, uh, Chair Olivares. Uh, good morning, Council Member Sawyer. This is Alcaldesa Fleming, uh, Rafael. And good morning to everyone on the call. Very excited to uh, see some of you and hear you all. Uh, so I have a quick update regarding Railroad Square. The uh, board met on Thursday, August 20th, and a very exciting meeting and uh, with lots of items to go through. Uh, there um, was some talk about the security program. Uh, it's working well. However, I plan to uh, bring a more detailed report uh, next uh, and report it at the next meet uh, at our next meeting, uh, so we can hear what's going on there. I do understand that there's an uptake again in graffiti, so lots of the uh, properties are being tagged, um, and uh, you know they're trying to figure out a way to kind of. Uh, um, uh, abate that, that situation or mitigate that situation. Um, in terms of uh, exciting news, the AC Hotel opened. Uh, last week they had a soft opening, uh, but due to the, uh, the, the smoke in the air, unfortunately, uh, they kept it to a very uh, minimum uh, in terms of, um, they just kept it amongst themselves, basically, uh, staff members and such. Uh, they've hired 20 uh, crew members uh, I met the general manager, very nice uh, fellow, uh, and uh, a new parking lot is under con construction on Davis and, and 6th Street, and that will uh, accommodate up to, I believe, uh, 90 or 100 vehicles, and then that would also alleviate the issue with the uh, parking lot on, under the freeway there on, um, on, on, on along, um, I forget the name of that street, uh, West 3rd and such. Uh, but things are moving forward. And uh, I also had the opportunity to meet the new general manager, our Hotel Rose. Uh, he's very excited about 
uh, joining the the hotel and the and the area. He's a local person, uh, knows Brad uh, pretty well from Visit Santa Rosa. So he did share that over the past couple of weeks, uh, the hotel has been booked, but um, um, unfortunately, it's with uh, evacuees and firefighters, which is great. But of course, we want the, those those tourists uh, returning to this area at some point in the near future. Um, uh, there's also six restaurants participating in the open and out program. Um, that means that they have their parklets. Uh, and so far with, um, um, I've done like walkthrough surveys and speaking to the uh, restaurant owners and such, and the response has been very positive. Uh, people just need to drive very carefully around the area so they don't bump into uh, any of the structures uh, providing those parklets. Um, I also understand that Miracle Plum has expressed some interest or there's a proposal for them to uh, initiate some kind of farmer's market. Uh, it's not, I'm not 100% sure if they've uh, reached out to Terra, but uh, that proposal is still on the table. Uh, they're just coming up with uh, uh, what it needs to, what they need to do in order to uh, make that happen. So that's still um, a, a potential uh, activity that could be brought to the, uh, to the area. Um, unfortunately, the art gallery closed as well as a uh, jewelry store uh, along 4th Street. But um, again, uh, I was there last night and the, the uh, ambience was upbeat, a lot of people out, um, social distancing, of course, and with the other uh, face covering. But um, there's some momentum being built under these current conditions. Uh, the visitor center uh, remains closed at the moment. Um, I haven't gotten an update on when it will reopen. Um, homeless situation is an ongoing issue, but um, um, the security folks have been uh, having uh, po positive experiences with the help of Catholic charities and uh, uh, you know, exercising uh, dialogue and getting them to uh, move around other to other areas. And uh, the board meetings have been uh, switched. The board meetings of the association are, are now going to be held on Thursdays at 9 a.m. Uh, on, on the third Thursday of the month, of each month. So uh, that is all I have for Rebel Square. And um, oh, last thing is that they are in the process of hiring a part-time uh, individual to uh, take the lead uh, uh, from, from the administrative aspect to help the association uh, continue moving forward. Thank you, Rafael. Uh, Vice Mayor Fleming, Council Member Sawyer, questions? Uh, no questions, uh, Mr. Oliveros. But I do have a um, the the reason that we may not be getting some comments from the public. I'm getting an, I got a text that the the um, system or the link was not working, but it, Evidently, the phone link is, is, is it not the case that the phone link is the way the, the, the community um, voices there or speaks to us on these Zoom meetings is by the phone? No, it, no it's, not, it's not phone only. They can use the raise hand feature on the Zoom uh, and ask questions. Okay, I just want to let's make sure, that Eileen, that, that, that that's, that is functioning. I got because of the text that I got was that it was... Um, that the link, um, the Zoom link on the agenda uh, was not functioning well or what at all, um, oh. but that the phone link does. Uh, could, could, if we could just double check that, it might be why we're not getting uh, and, 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 and I think too, some, some people may still have an older version of Zoom that does not support the raise hand feature. So oh. that may be an issue too. I know that we've had that issue come up during our council meetings as well. Okay. Oh, I the, will. Uh, I check in. I will check into that. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. And and so with that, if if we get this thing, if we do find a glitch, if people are wanting to comment on prior items, we we can make that happen. So, uh, on this item, any other questions? Okay. And I don't believe we have uh, hands raised yet on this one either. I, I don't see any hands raised on this. I, I, Thank you. So I won't. Let's go ahead and move on to our public safety update. Uh, Sergeant Wolf. Yes, can you hear me all right? Absolutely. Okay. So um, 
to mirror kind of what Cadence was saying earlier, there's definitely an increase uh, in the downtown corridor of homeless related issues. Uh, Fremont Park was cleared two days ago. Um, so uh, while many people took services, there was also a large group of service resistant people that have moved on elsewhere. And we are seeing more in the downtown corridor. Um, my team that goes out every morning and goes down the uh, by the businesses to make sure the storefronts are clear, found where normally there'd be between zero and two people because they know we come through. Today there were five. Um, we're seeing some of the issues we've seen before at the library and Old Courthouse Square, as Caden said, on uh, 4th Street. Uh, it's a fairly fluid situation right now because this population is in the process of moving. Um, so I'm getting regular updates. I mean, just a few minutes ago, even it was changing. Uh, I just got a report that the Greenway, a chunk of them seem to have established tents uh, under 101 on the south side. Uh, so we've definitely been taking enforcement. Unfortunately, as I've said previously, the jail doesn't hold people for more than four hours in most cases. Um, so sometimes we're dealing with the same person multiple times. Uh, we did get some of the uh, people we have many contacts with on the list for Project Hope, which is a good thing because when we get them housed, it cuts calls for service significantly and reduces the impact on downtown. Uh, as Caden said again, the host is also aware of the impacts downtown and they're gonna try and make more of a presence there as well. Uh, one thing of note, just on a safety standpoint, um, you know, we as police get a lot of training related to fentanyl um, because it's so deadly. We carry Narcan now but, and use it periodically to revive people but we're seeing an uptick and we think it's because uh, a large chunk uh, of the homeless population is apparently getting unemployment checks now so we're noticing an uptick of cars coming by and some sales going on and the main reason I'm bringing it up here is because we've also had people bring up a piece of plastic with what ended up red rock which is a name for heroin mixed with fentanyl and it's extremely it, it's poison um, Touching it, inhaling it um, can be deadly depending on how it's mixed. So um, for anybody that's downtown and sees what looks like a gooey brown substance on something, I just caution you to be careful because we're seeing a lot more of that. Um, with regards to Railroad Square, as Rafael said, uh, we are getting the reports of the graffiti. That information has been passed on to our graveyard teams who are patrolling it as they are able. Um, uh, I've gotten reports of acid put on windows, um, things that are not, you know, you can't just clean it up. It, it, I know that's having a major impact for some of the businesses on uh, 4th and 5th Street on the Railroad Square side. Um, so those are some of the things we're dealing with. Thank you, Sergeant Wolf. Uh, Vice Mayor Fleming, Council Member Sawyer. Thank you, Chair Olivares. Um, Sergeant Wolf, thank you for your report. Um, the Red Rock thing is, is highly concerning, um, especially as the parent of a small child who, you know, anybody who's had a, a small kid knows that they just pick up things. And the idea of her picking up a, a bit of fentanyl is just terrifying. Can you, um, I know it's um, difficult without the, um, the images, without being able to show images, but um, is there a way to provide um, us with an image of what that looks like, maybe not in this meeting, but in an upcoming meeting or um, through the, um, the SRPD website or something like that so that we can um, better inform our public because what I don't want is people not to come downtown. I do want them to be informed and for us to be able to um, protect our little ones as we go down downtown. Yes, absolutely. I, I will get that to you and we'll, we'll look at uh, what we can do maybe from a, a public education standpoint as well. That would be really helpful. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, and I think we, we can provide that to uh, Cadence and our downtown folks too. I think it would be helpful. And I believe one of your officers was exposed. Uh, how's that, that officer doing? Uh, he, he's doing all right. Um, we're not, it, it's so extreme that many of the gloves it'll penetrate right through you, there's special gloves that have to be worn when you're dealing with it if you know you're dealing with it really ideally you even have eye protection and more than that um you have to be careful how you dispose of the gloves that you handle it with 
Um, I know that we were in Fremont Park. Um, I mean, I was there personally when a lady came up with a piece of plastic going, look, there's red rock on here. This is dangerous. Um, so it, it is out there. Um, but the officer is doing well. Thank you for asking. Thank you. Yeah, I think this is a big public safety concern that we probably should get some information out. Uh, Captain Cregan, I see that you're on the call with us this morning. If you had a chance, I wanted to call out to you to see if you had any comments during our public safety update here uh, or anything more from a broader perspective around the city. Uh, thanks, uh, or Council Member Oliveris. So the, the big updates today is obviously we continue to work on uh, through our heat model of identifying some of the larger encampments and really focusing on the uh, getting people into services. So that was a big success with the Fremont Park this week that Fremont Park uh, was cleared out and we saw a significant amount of them eventually, at least initially say that they're gonna go into services. So we were very pleased with the relationship working with host and with housing and community services on that and all of our other uh, city partners. And as Sergeant Wolf said, now we're gonna be looking at some of the other areas uh, and the, how it's affecting downtown and especially going on to the Prince Memorial Greenway and working with our partners to address any of those. So the big thing for the group here in this meeting is just to continue to communicate with us with some of the concerns and we wanna hear about the issues. So Sergeant Wolf is our contact and Lieutenant Dave Becker and, and feel free to email, email me because we wanna hear about some of the concerns and that way we can best allocate our resources to address those. And especially this time for our downtown, we're very cognizant of that as so many uh, business owners are struggling and we want to do everything we can to assist them during these tough times. Thank you. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Uh, Vice Mayor uh, Fleming, Councilor Sawyer, any other questions on this item? I think let's see if we have any public uh, comment on this. I don't see any hands raised. However, I would like to let the members of the public know if you are calling in, if you press nine, it should Show me that your hand is raised and we can unmute you. And that's just a straight nine or is it a star nine? I believe it's just a straight nine. Okay. Oh, and actually we do have someone, a uh, caller from 8247. Um, hold on just one moment, we'll allow you to speak. If you would go ahead and um, you should be able to speak at this time. We're, we'll go ahead and uh, just keep track of the time for you. Okay, thank you very much. This is Eric Frazier. And I tell you, this is a horrendous mess to get in to make a comment on this meeting. The Zoom link was inactive. It showed an error message. Uh, there's an additional doorway that the city is now requiring people to go through in order to make a, com a public comment something to deal with Microsoft. Uh, the phone, so I'm calling in on the phone and it is indeed a star nine in order to make a public comment. Look at, you've had several months to figure this out. This isn't anything new. You continue to monkey with the system so that people are thrown off in order to submit or to participate because you know, we can't see it on Zoom. I imagine we can pull it up perhaps on another video feed, but this is really an abomination of your duty uh, as public servants to include the public. And so while we're listening here uh, completely across the board, everybody wants public comment and public interaction and public surveys and all this sort of thing, but you're failing at your most basic duty to provide that access during the meetings. And this is not the first time. This is an ongoing problem and certainly worthy of a class action suit against the city. You're denying people that are low income that don't have reliable internet connection or that are living in areas that are not served very effectively by Wi-Fi. You're also interfering with families that are looking to educate their children using Wi-Fi and they can't participate in these meetings. You have not thought this out in regards to what the public needs. In fact, what this looks like is a premeditated action by the city to deny the public the opportunity to participate. And like I said, this is not the first time. So while across the board, I can recognize that everybody involved in this meeting has our city, uh, city's interest at heart, 
one has to wonder whether, in fact, they have their own personal and political interests at heart, primarily above that of the city. And for that, I feel a little bit of shame and regret, quite frankly. Um, so, uh, so there you have it. You can figure it out or you cannot figure it out or you can bubble around and say, oh, I figured it out. Oh, this is, oh, ha, ha, ha. This is only a, a minor thing, so on and so forth. But this is incredibly serious. And, you know, you guys just don't get it. And, and the more that you guys just don't get it and we bear witness to it, the more we see that it's not just an accidental thing. This is an ongoing attempt to stifle the public voice and public participation. And for that, again, you guys should be held in ridicule and held accountable. So uh, thank you very much for your time today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Any thank other you, comments? Mr. President. Any other comments? Uh, no, I don't see any other hands raised at this time. Thank you. Okay, let me get back to my agenda here. Okay, we'll move on to item uh, 4.7, uh, maintenance of Courthouse Square. Uh, Dean. Uh, can you hear me okay? Yes. Great. Good morning. Good to see everybody. Uh, uh, August has been a very, very challenging month, very trying month between lightning strikes, fires, air quality, homeless encampment mitigations. Uh, but our staff uh, is still traipsing on downtown. Um, we now have a um, system for watering those plants downtown. Uh, so our guys are actually um, working through that just as fast as if there was not any obstacles uh, down 4th Street. So that's uh, please. getting adequately watered weekly. Um, we have had um, plenty of challenges that, that John uh, mentioned with um, uh, folks moving around and uh, definitely seeing an uptick in graffiti that we're dealing with. Um, and we're also seeing, believe it or not, um, some violence, uh, some, some vandalism against our trees. Right? I don't know what's going on, but it's very bizarre that they um, are hanging off of limbs and, and um, storing things up in trees and things that are um, breaking limbs. Um, seems like we've been doing an incredible amount of uh, emergency response tree work um, lately. Um, it's, it's, it's very strange. Um, um, uh, I'm, I'm really enjoying working with uh, the group with um, the development of the fountain. I'm excited to see that go in, to see that artwork uh, back displayed like it was before in the square. Um, it, it's I'm looking forward to it. I am really, really excited that this is going forward. Um, so we're, we're uh, working together as a team. There's some, some folks from uh, MSC South um, and we're all just collaborating uh, to try to get this thing moving forward and not, uh, not hold up the project at all. So um, that's about it. Yeah. Thank you, Dean. And, and again, uh, uh, thank you for the work you're doing down there and your, and your crews down there. Uh, you know, t t times have been difficult for everybody, but you guys continue to do your best effort down there to maintain things and keep things looking as nice as possible. Uh, Vice Mayor Fleming, uh, Councilmember Sawyer, questions? Th thank you. Uh, members of the public, questions related to maintenance of Courthouse Square? There are no hands raised at this time. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move on to uh, item 4.8. We have a housing and community services update from uh, Kelly Kuykendall. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me here. Um, I think that Sergeant Wolf and Captain Cregan, Cregan gave a pretty a good um, summary of uh, our efforts in the downtown and just our overall response to encampments throughout the city. So. I'll just give you a real quick update on um, sort of the homeless services and programming side of things. So we're, you know, busy just trying to uh, sustain all, all of our existing programs that the city supports and also our pandemic response. And just as a reminder, we have um, set up hotel rooms for uh, those most at risk of exposure to COVID-19. So that's one of our new programs um, in response to the pandemic. We also have the safe social distancing program, which is a managed camp at the Finley site. So uh, sustaining existing and pandemic response programs. Um, 
Those are sort of our tier one priorities right now. We're also going to be moving forward with um, uh, installing a uh, sprung structure in the parking lot at the Sam Jones Hall shelter. Um, and that is to restore our shelter bed capacity to pre-COVID-19 uh, shelter bed capacity. We had to move individuals out of that shelter to um, comply with a social distancing requirement. So we're hoping to have that up in the December timeframe so we can get those much needed emergency shelter beds back at Sam Jones Hall. And that will hopefully allow us to ramp down um, the, the program that we've set, set up at Finley. So that's my brief update and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor, Council Member Sawyer. Any members of the public wishing to comment on this item? No, there are no raised hands at this time. Thank you. And we've reached the end of our, of our, our agenda. And again, I, I want to apologize for any glitches that did occur during this process. Uh, you know, there is no uh, nefarious intent here to keep people from making comments, but I would like to have us look into whether or not we had a problem with our connection today. Uh, and I would ask those of you who are still with us, if you did have questions or comments to make on any of the items, if you could please reach out to us, uh, because uh, at least I would want to, I want to consider whether we need to have a special meeting sometime soon and not wait another month for a meeting if there were people that wanted to comment on this item. Uh, it's, it's important that we hear from you and I know that when we meet uh, face to face, we have a lot of public comment and we encourage that. Uh, it, it is, uh, it is offensive to me for somebody to say that we are uh, purposely trying to prevent the public from speaking to us because that is not the case. And I think I speak for my colleagues as well and for staff. Uh, I found that very offensive personally, uh, but we will do everything we can to uh, ensure that you all are able to comment during our meetings. So I will ask staff to look into uh, what issues that occur. We, we, we're dealing with uh, somebody else's system to be able to have these meetings. Uh, this is not optimal for me or my colleagues or for the entire city. Uh, this is not the way we're used to doing business. And for that, I, I do apologize. Uh, but again, I think we need to look at whether or not uh, we need to have a special meeting before our next monthly meeting to ensure that we have uh, our public uh, able to make comment and ask questions about any of the items that we did present today. So uh, I, I will work with staff offline on seeing what we can do to, to make that fix and to ensure that you're all uh, that you're all heard. So with that, uh, that's the end of our business and we will adjourn this meeting. Thank you.